Hello chess lovers, Sorlin here and in this video I want to take a quick look at the game played at Top Chess Engine Championship Season 19 Super Final. This is a game played between Stockfish and Lila Chess Zero and I have to tell you that the game is extremely long, it lasted for 164 moves. But as I don't want to waste your precious time, we will concentrate only on the critical parts of it. So this is a game played in round 60 and Stockfish which had white pieces opened up with e4 to which Lila answered with knight f6, Alokhin defense is on the board, d4, d6, knight f3, modern variation is on the board, bishop g4, bishop e2, e6, white castled kingside, bishop e7, h3, and we are pretty much following the main theoretical line, something which had been seen many times, d5, c5, bishop takes f3. This position had also been seen at 1972 Fischer Spassky World Chess Championship match, where in here Spassky recaptured with the light squared bishop. That game ended in a draw, but later it will be only in 1979 that in a game against Bagirov, Spassky would choose g takes f3 and uh, in this game we see this move. So by recapturing with a g pawn, white managed to open up this g file and now by relying on that fact we'll try to organize an attack. Although soon time will show that making use of that fact is not that easy. So already I'm starting to go through the game quickly, white is starting a pawn push on the queen side but with b5 Blake is locking up the queen side thus neutralizing any possible counterplay. Meanwhile this h pawn is marching forward and uh, you know I have uh, seen one peculiarity in these engine matches. Usually they are ending up in locked up positions and then they are starting long maneuvers. In this case we also see a locked up position where the one who can make a progress is Stockfish which has white pieces. Although up to move 150 we won't see uh, something special. Uh, quite possibly I should jump to move 146 where finally black makes a mistake. Yeah, there is uh, not much interesting happening on the board and uh, we can watch this all the time. And now let's jump to move 146. So yeah, but maybe we should go back a little bit. Yeah, from this move on maybe it will be good to take a look what's happening. So on move 142, white is playing knight a5, targeting the pawn on c6. Yeah, there is only one pawn exchanged, right? The a pawn is exchanged with the b pawn, bishop h4. White is making a pawn sacrifice and then we have bishop g5 knight g8 h6 yeah by bringing the dark squared bishop on g5 white finally manages to make a progress is pushing forward his h pawn g6 is provoking a weakness queen h4 and knight e7 this is the critical part of the game where in here finally lila is making a mistake knight e7 is a terrible mistake and uh, yes definitely allowing this dark squared bishop to intrude inside uh, the f6 square is suicidal. Instead it was better to strengthen the position with knight e8. If bishop f6 then knight takes f6. This line even favors black you know. And then black has this beautiful e5 move relying on the vulnerability of the fourth rank and this pawn for example if d takes e5 then bishop takes c5 can follow and if f takes e5 then anyways yes in both cases bishop takes c5 is coming. And but instead to queen h4 lila answered with knight e7, there comes bishop f6 check, king g8, rook g2, now white wants to play queen h5, capture on e7 and then sacrifice on g6, king f7, meanwhile black is trying to strengthen his position but anyways bishop e7 follows, white is removing that uh, strong defensive piece and at this point we have a heavy blow guys, yes we have a heavy blow and from the title you may have already learned what's going to happen. Uh, at this point Stockfish made a queen sacrifice. There we have it. Queen h5, a bold queen sacrifice, something which is blowing apart Black's position. Right now the threat is rook takes g6 and all Black can do is to accept the queen sacrifice and finally once might is managing to open up the g file Let's see how is white going to make use of that fact. Rook g7 check, king e8, 
rook takes h7 uh, white is removing the h pawn is now getting a passed pawn and yeah also uh, rook g8 is now a threat right for example let's take a look what if rook a8 then rook g8 check is coming and then rook takes f8 rook takes d7 and this is going to be winning this pawn is a menace knight takes c6 will also follow yeah uh, just no way out in the game we see king d8 by lila uh, trying to find a safe shelter for the king and there comes rook g7 and now rook takes e7 is a mighty threat right black plate knight a8 and this time we see rook h8 check king c7 rook g8 opening up the h pawn's path rook a4 there we have it h7 you are free to win this knight but finally white queen appears on the board yes in this cramped position black has no chance of surviving knight b6 rook e8 although simple c takes b6 is also winning but in the game we see rook e8 intensifying the pressure on e7 knight c8 rook takes c8 queen takes c8 rook e7 check and then we see the exchange of queens rook takes a7 yeah the game is over white has an extra piece also the pawn on a6 drops and at this point uh, we have a resignation white is neutralizing the h pawn as well is winning it and after 19 moves checkmate will appear on the board after maneuvering for so long Finally, Sockfish managed to find his opponent's Achilles heel and finally we see the end of the Trojan War. Uh, in the end, a chess puzzle for you where the task is to find the mating line for white. It's white to move and as usual, we'll wait for your answer in the comment section. Feel free to check out my early uploads as well. We'll see you in my next video. Take care.